Welcome to day 12 of the consecration of St. Joseph. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Chastity is a virtue, a very important virtue. To be chaste is to have self-mastery, to be in control of your passions and sexuality. Contrary to what many people think, a person who exercises chastity is not repressing or rejecting the beauty of human sexuality. On the contrary, chastity preserves the human heart and body for authentic self-giving. All people, no matter their vocation in life, are called to chastity. Chastity is a virtue that prevents us from being slaves to our passions and acting like irrational animals. Celibacy, on the other hand, is a special form of chastity. God calls some men and women to celibacy for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. St. Joseph was both chaste and celibate. He was called by God to espouse a virgin consecrated to God in her mind, body, and soul. St. Joseph was a chaste guardian of the virgin. St. Joseph and Mary lived in what is often called a Josephite marriage. They were truly husband and wife. They never engaged in sexu sexual relations. Their vocation was to be united in heart, mind, and soul, but never in body. They were both consecrated to God and sacrificed the natural good for a greater good, the salvation of souls. St. Joseph is pure of heart. To be chaste is to be pure of heart. If a person's heart is not pure, they're incapable of seeing God. St. Joseph's heart is exceptionally pure. St. Joseph gazed on the continence of God in the person of his son for decades. Poets have often stated that the eyes are the window to the soul. If this is true, St. Joseph must have had the most chaste and pure eyes of any husband who ever lived. His eyes and heart were pure intentioned, chaste and afire with love for Jesus and Mary. Modern man has become blinded by impurity. The world encourages premarital relations, cohabitation, contraception, and many other immoral practices. Chastity is a forgotten virtue today. Even married couples live with the idea that they are free to do whatever they desire with body of their spouse. However, this is not true. Chastity is required in marriage as well in order for couples to truly love one another, to regain their dignity and respect for each other. Your spiritual father is a gentleman. St. Joseph is the first Christian gentleman next to Jesus. It's a great example of masculine chastity. He married to the most beautiful woman in the world and he treated her with respect, dignity, and reverence. If men today were more like St. Joseph, protectors and defenders of beauty, instead of users and abusers, of the feminine mystery, what a different world this would be. God wants all men to be like St. Joseph, as the first chaste guardian of the Virgin. Most men will be called to marriage, while some are called to consecrated celibacy. Both vocations are necessary. Without marriage, there's no children. Without priests, there are no sacraments. Married men need to be chaste in marriage. Priests and bishops need to be like St. Joseph in their chaste love for the virginal church. Guardians, defenders, protectors of the beauty entrusted to them, not users and abusers of the sacred mysteries. St. Benedict the Sixteenth writes, Joseph, the just man, is appointed to be the steward of the mysteries of God, the paterfamilias and guardian of the sanctuary, which is Mary the bride and the logos in her. He, Joseph, thus becomes the icon of the bishop to whom the bride is betrothed. She is not at his disposal, but under his protection. St. Joseph, pray for us.